Welcome to two sample inference on proportions using Bayesian inference. In this video, we're going to do working with JAGs we're, uh, to do this inference, and we're going to be using sampling. Uh, the code for this will be on the repository under the code folder, and I think it's JAGS40.R that has all the data in it because we're going to use a very small data set. So this should be able to get you going pretty quick, so you might want to stop the video somewhere along the way and go fetch that file. All right, so suppose we have two populations uh, that we're interested in that has proportions P1 and P2, and they're on the same attribute, so we're not switching attributes. Uh, and a, the typical inference that we do on these, if you've taken a statistics course, is uh, uh, P1 minus P2. So what's the difference in these proportions? And you can use this to create credible intervals, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, we'll talk about uh, Bayes factors later, but right now we're just getting used to using JAGS and how to do some basic calculations with it. All right, so here's an example. A grocer is interested in the proportion of tomatoes that need to be discarded upon arrival for two different suppliers, okay? So I have a picture here, it's from Shutterstock. Uh, I pulled it from Bloomberg, you can see the reference. But they're interested in, you know, some of them are gonna need to be thrown away. Not every tomato that comes in the box is perfect. Okay, so they come a damaged, rotting, unripe, and they're just not going to make it to the shelf. Okay, so uh, the grocer reports the number discarded, uh, X1, that's what we're gonna call it, out of the M tomatoes in the box. For supplier one and the number discarded x2 out of m2 tomatoes in the box for supplier two so what we have here is a nice binomial setup so let p1 be the proportion discarded by from supplier one and let p2 be the proportion discarded from supplier two and we're interested in this difference okay so we also have to realize that we're expecting a small proportion to be discarded. So when we set up our prior distributions, we should probably reflect that. All right, so since we're gonna reflect that, why don't we choose our priors to be P1 is beta 1, 9, and P2 is beta 1, 9. They're exactly the same. And if we don't really think there's a difference between P1 and P2, then the prior distribution should be the same. All right, so they go out and they collect some data, and this data is set up a little bit differently than you might have seen. Uh, typically, you would say, oh, well, there were 3 out of 121 and 7 out of 119. But they looked at more than just one box, right? I mean, if you did this and you made this claim to your uh, supplier that they have too many defective tomatoes, what are they going to do? They're going to say, well, go look at more boxes and then come back and tell me. So here they looked at, each of them looked at uh, five boxes from each supplier across different times and recorded the numbers that were discarded out of the total number in the box. All right, so we have counts, which is a binomial likelihood. Um, we would typically write this M and P1. When we get to JAGS, you'll notice that JAGS flips these around, so don't be surprised or confused. I'm just letting you know now that it's going to flip it around on you. All right, so uh, we're going to use JAGS here to obtain K samples first from our uh, posterior distribution associated with P1 and then we're going to get K more samples from the posterior distribution for P2 given the data that's associated with P2 and then what we're going to do is we're going to difference those samples okay and when we difference the samples we create a posterior distribution for the difference in the two proportions okay so this is how we're going to come up with something useful and this is going to end up being in the JAGS code as well all right, so here's our basic setup. So we're going to have a binomial. X1 is M1, P1. X2 is M2, P2. And we have replicates on this, by the way. There's, there's actually five of them under each. Uh, here's our prior information, and here is our data. So now is the time you'd probably want to go over and uh, get that file off the repository. Maybe pause it here, uh, load it into R, and I'll see you there in just a second. Okay, so we're now in R. I've loaded up the JAGS code. It's JAGS40.R. You can dig it off the repository under the code folder. Uh, I've just set my working directory to my desktop here. I don't really need to run it, but if on your machine, you'll need to change this because it's dependent on the machine. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so I've already loaded uh, R to JAGS. It's telling me I've got some issues associated with 
which version of R things were built under. Here's my data. This is the data that's exactly the same as what was on the slide. So here are my X's, here are my M's for the first population, here are my X's, and here are my M's for the second population. And here are the lengths of each one. And each one's going to be five, so it's not really that big of a deal. So I'm just going to run through these really quick uh, and get to the JAGS code. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking that XI, X1I, is going to be D-bine, which means uh, binomial. And here you can see you have P1 and M1. So this is reversed from the typical notation. And here it's M1I because I'm going to cycle through all five of them in the first population. I'm going to do the exact same th thing for X2 uh, and circle through all those five using exactly the same setup, except now I have P2 and M2. Then what I'm also going to do is create a difference. Remember, our inference is going to be based off this difference, and I'm calling this P diff 1. And here are our prior distributions that we set, which were uh, beta 1 9s. So everything there is set, uh, and it should run for you. Uh, I'm going to write this out. Uh, so if I needed to use it later, also the, the uh, JAGS function needs the actual file. Uh, here are my data. I've got X1, M1, N1, X2, M2, N2. So these are the data that I'm going to pump into this because I need N1, N2. I need X1 and M1, X2 and M2. Okay, so let's run this. So we get the data set up. The parameters we're going to keep track of. I'm going to keep track of P1, P2, and the difference, this new variable that I created here. So let's set that thing up. Okay, uh, I'm going to put in some prior information. So I'm going to say P1, uh, for not prior information, but initial values. P1, I'm going to put at 0.1, and P2, I'm going to put at 0.1. So same values, pretty easy. Um, there it is. Let me run the whole thing. Okay, so now we can run this through JAGS. Okay, so our data is data1, which is the data we put up here. Our initial values are our initial values that we specified here. Parameters to save is this PARM1. Uh, we're going to pull off um, a thousand iterations from two chains, and the model file is the file we wrote above, and we wrote it out. So if I run this, it'll run really fast. Everything's happy, ran really fast. Um, I'm going to update it so that I have 5,000 samples instead of just 1,000. Okay, and that ran really fast. I'm going to look at the trace plot of these. And you can see that they, well, the deviance looks pretty flat. P1 looks pretty flat, seems to be within a, a reasonable range. When I say reasonable range, I mean it's not going up in one area and then down in another area. Everything's kind of flat, and it's not like really getting wider in one area than another. Uh, P2 looks good, it's flat, not getting wider or, or narrower in one area than another. And here is the difference, and it looks pretty good as well. So I feel pretty good about this. Uh, the next thing is going to peel these off, and that's what I want to do. I'm going to turn it into MCMC samples so that I can peel these off and do something with them. Uh, I could just run the summary of them, and that's what lots of people would do. But I actually like to make my own summary so I can see what's going on here. So here I'm getting mod 1 samps, and this will give me for the first chain this will give me for the second chain and then i'm going to bind them together so that all the chains are in the same frame and then i can look at the quantiles here so here i can since i've turned it into a data frame i can look at p1 p2 and the p diff because i'm really not interested in the deviance at this point okay so here's our uh posterior credible interval would be for the first population it's about 3% to 7% are going to be thrown away. Uh, then we can go to the next one. And 5% to 9% are going to be thrown away. So they do look on the surface different. But when we run this one, this is the one that matters. And notice that here you've got a negative value and a positive value, which sort of says in this case that 0 is in the interval. Okay, so since we have a negative and a positive, zero is in the interval, which means probably not different. Uh, we can also calculate that here in a second. Uh, so here is the densities, if you wanted to run the densities for each of these. 
and here is the probability that the difference is greater than zero and notice that for this the probability is less than 0 0.05 so if you were interested in supplier two being worse than supplier one you might have some sort of evidence uh, that says hey they're really not the same and maybe you should go and uh, talk to your supplier about that but if you showed him this one up here he's gonna say nope they're the same zeros in that interval and the reason we're seeing this is the fact that uh, this is like a two-sided test and this is a one-sided test so you have more power in a one-sided test to detect things okay so hopefully this gets you rolling and started if you're doing Bayes inference on two proportions uh, all the code is here you could have done this directly in R but I'm trying to get you using Jags so when we fit more and more complex models you'll understand how to do it most of the stuff at the bottom pretty much stays the same the big things that change is how to get the data in and the model statement so we're gonna move on to looking at some other things in the next video I think we're gonna do regression uh, simple linear regression first all right, so I'll see you there.